Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to deploy Quarkus Java application to OpenShift using new feature Docker Storage View, uh, which is the new feature in RHBQ, the Red Hat Build Quarkus 1.11 we just released last week. Let's get started. Since the Red Hat Build Quarkus 1.11, the OpenShift Docker Build strategy is the prepared build strategy which is support the Quarkus application targeted for JVM as well as a Quarkus application compiled to native executable. However, the S2IO build strategy remains the default deployment strategy for backward compatibility reason. So you can configure deployment strategy using uh, Quarkus OpenShift build strategy properly in your application property files. As you see, we have three build strategy Quarkus support in production environment, but most likely, uh, Docker build strategy we support all use cases. For example, uh, Quarkus tooling and JVM and native compilation, but also serverless function. You can also use S2I build, S2I binary build as well, but you have some limited uh, support by Red Hat build of the Quarkus. Okay, let's get into the demo. So first of all, uh, we're going to use uh, developer sandbox which uh, provide the developer for free. So when you run the developer sandbox, specifically call it your space web ID tool with a specific Git URL, just like you see. And then uh, developer sandbox uh, automatically uh, spin up your call it your space based on your Git repository. For example, as you see, uh, first of all, the call it your space image pull down and then clone your the application git repository based on Eclipse check the latest version and then uh, in the end you have uh, the cloud and every application environment based on web id tool so you don't need to install any software that is a great benefit for developer and devops team for cloud and every application and microsoft application development so once your application is spin up your core ready workspace we can go through the all existing application, this sample application based on to-do, which allows you to have the data transaction, like a cross transaction. So let's try to start the Quarkus application using development mode. Just click on the wizard in the uh, Quarkus tool, live coding, and then you go to endpoint. You can find uh, some specific data already uh, loaded and inserted. And to create a new data, like I create a new demo and update the Quarkus workshop, my next uh, work item for the next week sometimes. And then you can uh, delete some uh, work item if you're already done. And then uh, when you go back to our code ready workspace, you can find here the race uh, Quarkus version by ready support 1.11. We just released uh, actually uh, last week. And then uh, let's try to add some specific capability of our Quarkus application. For example, you can run up a new terminal and uh, edit some uh, the has check based on micro profile. But previously, my video, you can also add micrometer capability and the has check. So put in some count it and also time for measuring your application uh, metrics. When you invoke specific uh, REST API, for example, uh, all retrieve all items, but also we're going to put in some specific metric into a create a method, which means when you create a new work item, we can find that. Okay, go back to our endpoint and try to access the metric uh, URL, which is already inside the Quarkus application. So go to the URL Q slash metrics. You can find all metric data from application and also uh, your runtime environment. So as you see here, uh, the bunch of the application metrics, like a to-do resources, something like that. Let's try to reload this application and point and go back to metric, uh, the data, and you can find the, uh, the get time all second, just uh, increase one. And I try to reload a few more time and put in the new uh, work item, for example, the new to-do item. And back to the metric endpoint and try to reload and then you can find the metric just updated uh, along with the we change the endpoint as you see two endpoint create and get all uh, method here 
So next step, we're going to log in the remote OpenShift cluster, but this is actually the same cluster in the developer sandbox. And then we just need to change the right project, for example, the dev, uh, dev development project. This is OpenShift dev console. You can find that there is no resource found here, which means I don't deploy any application part into that namespace. And then changing my directory and then running, uh, try to add a new OpenShift extension, which will allow us to deploy this application to OpenShift container platform. One of the beauty of the Quarkus extension capabilities. And then we need to add some specific uh, key variable in the application property to use Docker build. So for example, we're going to use the uh, build strategy Docker and a sample certified certificate, which means uh, we are not going to use the commercial certificate to X developer a sandbox and then they automatically expose the endpoint and they deploy the Kubernetes cluster just like OpenShift. And then click on Wizard, one of the two just deploying OpenShift, and then it will just start your uh, Maven packaging command line. In the meantime, uh, Docker build strategy actually uh, used the existing Docker file, for example, under the Docker directory, you can find the, the multiple Docker files for JVM, native compilation, and Flaster. Is you can see the logs uh, when you are packaging your application. The log is exactly the same step already defined in the your Docker file, as you see in my core ready workspaces. So it takes a few minutes, and then uh, in the end, once the uh, build is successful, when you go back to your developer console and open shift. The Quarkus application is just starting, uh, and then it takes a little bit uh, moment to start up. As you see, uh, the same Quarkus version when you run inside the core radio space as a development mode, the same version 1.11.6 final. And I try to access endpoint, make sure everything is the same, just like my local environment in the core radio spaces, in the same uh, three item here and also go back to uh, metric endpoint here, and then you can find the same application, but the uh, metric data uh, is the uh, reset because it's based on this OpenShift environment rather than a local core radio space environment. All right, here's just the first to get retrieve all item, it's just the number is one, and try to add a few more uh, work items, for example, test test and test two, and I try to reload several times. And now you can see uh, the total time three, and then you can also expose your metry to external uh, Prometheus. I already deployed Prometheus pod in a uh, OpenShift cluster. As you see, uh, you can find the table and the graph based on your metric from Quarkus application, and also when you are uh, um, when you change it, when you reload several more times, you can find the, the same metrics in Prometheus, but also the Quarkus metric endpoint. So this is a really cool thing to deploy your application to a Prometheus container platform. Another we care about the Docker build strategy. This strategy builds the artifact like a job file or a native executable outside the OpenShift cluster. In this demo, we just uh, packaging the application using Docker file, but also at the same time we deploy OpenShift directly. But you can also use this strategy uh, to build the application locally or under the CI environment and then provide that artifact to OpenShift build system together with the Docker file which means you can separate the build and the deploy uh, along with your own the CI environment. But also you can deploy uh, at the same time from build to deploy just one command line, just like I showed this demo. So thanks for watching. If you have more any question around the Docker build strategy or RHBQ 1.11, please let us know. I'm more than happy to address your question. Thanks for watching once again. Have a good rest of the day.